Another thing that we might need to do is because of lighting environment, maybe a bad night out the night before, you might have bags or some darkening under the eyes, which we may need to just soften out a little bit. So again, there's different techniques for dealing with this. My philosophy of doing it is not really doing blurs, because blurs, you know, average out pixels. I prefer to emulate what you would do in photography, and that would be, you know, fill in shadows with light. You know, if you if you have enough light, you don't have shadows. So if you don't have shadows, you don't have wrinkles, bags, things like that. So again, I would draw a shape, usually like a kidney-ish kind of shape, blend the the area of the outside of that softness a little bit on the inside. Again, we can we could track this. I'll track it for a few frames, and that will do. It. And then what I do is I'll turn off that shape so we don't see it. Now I usually start with uh, doing a reduction of contrast, so I'm, like I'm filling in that area so the blacks get lifted, the highlights down. So, so this is going to start to help underneath there. But as I do that, everything neutralizes to gray. So that's not good. So now I have to color balance in to make this blend work better. So you can say, okay, I've got like a color match here that's not too bad but we might be seeing just a slight edge of where my shape is not working. So that's where I would add a little bit more of my softness in there. And now if I turn that on and off, see I'm reducing it and depending on where my shape sits, you know, I can drag that up. Actually, let's do it like this. I'll do it with it off and just affect the shape. So you can see I'm getting more into the shadow under the lower eyelid. And then if I hit play, you know, we tracked it for however many frames, that sits in there. And again, it's like the other technique, if there's a movement or a shadow or whatever, you might have to do dynamic color correction on there. One last thing though to realize is when you are reducing the contrast, potentially, you know, bring, you know, the gains and the gammas to meet or the lift area to meet with the gammas, all of those things as you're squashing it, you're also squashing the contrast of the noise or the grain on the shot. So if you're not putting grain into it, it's actually on film, or if it was a, you know, a, a, a noisier uh, digital image, we're actually making less noise in that area. So in order to help sell the effect, so it doesn't look like you just like put Vaseline or something on the lens, I will usually add um, a grain element inside that shape as well. And this is where I'd, I'd zoom in so I get a good feeling of turning this on and off. Those default values are actually not too bad. But by having that grain in there, I'm effectively putting a noise layer on. So the noise that I've reduced by um, reducing the contrast, I'm reapplying so that texturally it's, it remains the same. So again, you're not giving away the gag um, because it's suddenly smooth and no texture in that area. Now it's just reduced bag or wrinkles or whatever it happens to be.